Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I used to give this John Wick statue this really cool paint job. Now, this isn't one of my files. You can't find this on my website, although if you go to 3dprinterprops.com, you can find you know hundreds of files. You can also check out my Patreon page where you get four files a month, usually five, for the starting tier of 12 bucks. But again, this is not one of mine. You will not find it on my website. It is awesome though. Links below to the artist and the file. Just the motion of it, the movement, super, super happy with it. And I loved painting this. So let's go ahead behind the fake wall and I'll show you how I got all these different effects. So the detail in this John Wick statue is just crazy. I mean, there's fabric in the coats, you've got buttons, buttonholes. The, uh, the folds just look amazing. There's the hair. The base is great too. It's got this great continental seal, which looks really neat. And then a cool John Wick plaque up front. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this an overall black coat. When I think of John Wick, I think of, well, you know, his black pants, the coat, black coat, the black tie, the black shirt, you know, black on black on black. I think it's a cool look for the character. Usually the, the bad guy wears black and here the good guy wears black. If you can count a guy who kills a whole lot of people. Uh, over uh, dog dying, uh, a good guy, but I do, I do. Hit it with the hair dryer just to, you know, dry it up to get ready for the second coat. And you can see here that the gray is really showing through, but this second coat really takes care of everything. And uh, I went with a matte because I really wanted it to, to sort of soak up that light and really, you know, make this like a striking figure. Plus, I'm going to do some. Uh, special stuff to the certain areas to make them a little bit glossier. And uh, then we're going to hit the base. And I just put a whole bunch of coats of this gold. And these Tamiya paints, they really go on really well. And it took a few. First, I could see there I had a little bit too watery, so I added some more paint to it. And as you can see, after untaping it, the base looks pretty sharp. He's very black and ready to go. Now, yes, I painted the face and things like that. But, you know, that kind of really helps with your shadows because... Uh, it sort of lets the uh, sh the black there take in the shadows. You can sort of see the black underneath there. Now, this flesh tone, it looks a little oranger than it does in real life on camera, uh, but I'm going to go through and add highlights to you know the knuckles and things like that later on. But first, let's go ahead and paint his face. Again, it's not quite so orange, uh, but uh, it looks pretty neat. You can see how the, the darker shades sort of uh, bleed through and you get a little bit of depth right off the bat. So now I'm just going ahead and I'm adding a, a more peach color, a lighter color onto the knuckles and highlights. And I'm adding actually this grayer color underneath there before I put the black on because, you know, I think it would just look weird, just like straight black onto the flesh. This way you're going to get some depth. You've got the flesh tones, you've got the gray, and then you get the black. I'm doing the guns in that Tamiya uh, black that I have. I love that. And now we're going to add some highlights. So think of when you're, you know, you're seeing a portrait of someone being lit or even just get a mannequin head and put some light on it or look at yourself in the mirror. You can see how the light will strike the bridge of the nose. It'll uh, strike the, the nostrils and the higher areas like the, the cheeks will pick up uh, more light and uh, that helps define them. And you can see there on the hand where I really sort of put a little bit of green onto the veins uh, and really added that. It's hard for me to, and I love this blood look because he's punching everybody. It's hard for me to paint these figures and do these videos because you got to get really in there tight. But what I'm doing there is when I'm building these tones up is kind of like what we do with any of the things I've been building. You start with the darker tones and you go up. Now, I wanted to age this and make it look old, so I'm putting on those uh, washes that I love, and I'm just putting it on really liberally, and this is, uh, I think, the, the lighter brown or the darker brown, and all the links will be below for everything I use. Wiping it away with a cloth to make it look more natural, and then going through with the black wash and uh, picking that up again with a paper towel and wiping it around. I think I put it on a little bit too thick, so I'm just going to sort of really rub that out, and then if I need to... Uh, go back and add some more gold. But uh, so far, I'm pretty happy with how this guy is turning out. Again, I love the pose and I love the base. Uh, I think it could do without the few little bullets. I think that's what those are. I'm not sure what that long stick thing is. Uh, either put a lot of bullets there or don't put any. But, um, you know, whatever. I almost sanded them away, but I didn't. Uh, 
And I'm just going to add some black into this, all the letters, to really make that John Wick stand out. Because uh, I think that's a really neat base that really, you know, has his name on it and looks like the coin. And I went ahead and splattered some blood on his face. You can see how now there's, there's shadows under the eyes. The nose is more highlight. Now I'm going to add some of this Krylon to things like his tie and the buttons. Because I everything else is this matte black. Now adding this Krylon spray paint really gives you that. Uh, the, the paint looks glossy on the tie, so it's like more of like a silk or satin tie. And there it is. The eyes could use a little work. I'm getting better at those. I'm trying. But I love the feel of the statue, how it moves, and it's just pretty sharp. Okay, so super happy with it. Uh, I think the face needs a little bit more work. I've been watching tutorial after tutorial to get faces really well. I used to color for, you know, comic books, and I can make a face, I can render it out so it looks great. There's something about painting it on a three-dimensional face that is always stumping me. So I'm watching more and more videos. I think I'm getting it down, uh, but it needs some more work with the layering of the effects. But I like how it's turned out. Eyes still crazy hard. To me, they look like, you know, white with like two black dots. But again, I'm working on it. We'll learn to do it together. Uh, but the overall other effects of the whole statue, I'm really digging. Again, you can find uh, where to pick this up in the links below and a link to the artist's page. Uh, if you are interested in other files that you've seen in other videos, go ahead and head over to 3dprintedprops.com or check out my Patreon page uh, where you can get four files a month, usually five, I throw in a bonus file for the starting tier of 12 bucks. But again, if you're interested in this John Wick, take a look at the link below to that and to the artist page. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. This is probably the last intro outro I'll be wearing this shirt, although I think I might have one more. <laughs> and then, you know, for the next videos, I'll try to be swapping my shirts uh, out during these. But I've got so many intros and outros to record because I'm kind of backed up in videos because of the holidays and, you know, just not feeling well that uh, I'm sort of recording a bunch of them now. But it's a very comfortable shirt. It used to be my dad's. It used to be my dad's. All right, guys. Thanks all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.